it's Kate here and welcome to this tutorial. We will be drawing another seascape, yep, and I really wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you who are subscribing because it's already 15,000 subscribers, yay! And yes, so this is the tutorial as a thank you, a full real-time narrated tutorial, just uh, to say a huge thank you for all of you who support me. Once again, I just also wanted to say that if you'd like to support me even more, then you can check out my Patreon or my Pastel School, and I'll be really grateful for your support there as well. But for now, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we will be drawing the seascape together. You will find the reference photo on my Patreon page, but you can access it for free there, and also on Pixabay, I will leave the link in the description. But also the class will be available on my pastel school for free as well, so you can check that out if you would like to take videos one at a time. And you can also submit your drawing as a homework and get the critique on it. So let's get started and let's start watching the tutorial. In this tutorial we will be drawing a lighthouse and I really like this picture, I found it on Pixabay. So it's very difficult to find lighthouses here where I live, but I really enjoyed drawing them, so I hope you will enjoy this tutorial as much as I do. And we will begin by preparing our paper. This is the Arteza sketchbook, the one that I'm using for sketches. Not very expensive, nice paper, smooth enough for small sketches, as it doesn't give you a lot of texture when you actually apply pastels, and it actually holds pastel really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my willow charcoal and a selection of pastels for the sea and for the land. As well, I have my charcoal pencils and also some pastel pencils, just in case if I need those tiny details, as it's easier to add those in small um, drawings, it's easier to add those with the pencils. So the first thing that we will start with is the sketch. I will be using my willow charcoal and I will be looking at the composition. So another thing that I suggest you do also when you are only beginning as an artist especially, is to convert your images into black and white and create that black and white sketch or a thumbnail sketch just to see the values. But we can also, as this is a small drawing, we can also do this here and we will start this technique. I actually learned it from Yelena Tapkina. She's one of my favorite pastel artists and um, she does more kind of a graphic work and she creates the value drawing first with charcoal, similar to what you would do in oil, and then she applies the colors already on top of those values. So basically, you can see how your drawing is going to look while it's still at the initial sketch stage. So you will see all the values of the drawing and if it's going to look good. What I want to do now is I want to start by creating the horizon line, and I think I'm going to raise it just a bit like it's in the photo, just a bit higher up than my middle of the page and I don't want to make my lighthouse enormous as it's going to break that illusion of it being in the distance so I'm going to draw it quite small now I'm adding that hill where it's standing on and I want it to really kind of look as it's far away in the distance, so the lighthouse is not going to be big. I'm looking at the image that I have, and I'm actually measuring the height of this little hill by the shore and the height of the lighthouse. So I'm going to measure that now, and I see that the lighthouse is approximately one and one third of the hill. So this is going to give me that good um size comparison in my drawing. So this is going to be the lighthouse now, it's just a little tube. And by the lighthouse we also have this little house, and it's quite tiny, this house, don't make it too tall. So this is going to be the house here. The flag will leave it, there's another house over here, but we don't see it very good because it's white, like the lighthouse, so all we see is this kind of roof and then the part where it's sticking out. Another house. And this tall building, I actually don't like it particularly. I kind of prefer not adding it in there. So I'm going to leave it out of the picture. And I see that I put it very kind of far. So it should end, the cliff should end 
but the cleft palatal heel should end here like so so this is the good part about charcoal you can always fix the drawing so now i see that here in the distance there is some kind also of shore happening in the back there and over here we have a wave and this wave i'm looking at that angle how i see the wave actually moving so it moves in this direction and the angle we have here and this is where the foam is going to be so for now i'm just leaving it like that here we have the shore and over here we have the rocks so the rocks i really want to keep the rocks in there so for now i'm just going to add them with charcoal just to create those shapes just so that i know approximately where they're going to be and here i'm just looking at that coastline and here let's throw in those trees so the trees are quite dark and it's also going to give us that sense of size the trees are not very big so maybe there are some bushes in there as well like so then we have a darker area happening over here also so now we're starting to actually add the value into our sketch so these are the bushes happening closer here and at the bottom obviously they're going to be darker because their less light hits them and over here there are some darker rocks which i want to show also but this is the good thing about making small drawings so a4 and smaller because you don't get into those tiny details and you don't get too carried away with realism okay so these are our rocks and now i see that here the wave actually has some darker parts where the water is like so and then to separate this foam from the rest of the sea i'm going to add value to the sea here so this is going to give us that appearance of distance first of all and second of all it's going to give us that um, effect of the foam being actually bright white so under the foam usually the sea gets the water gets a bit darker so we're going to show that as well even though here because it's reflecting the sky it's quite light but here where the wave kind of curves on its own we will have that darker edge because of the structure of the wave as it's like kind of a cylinder and the top is going to look a lot darker and here the wave has its own shape it has to be also darker so it kind of curves over itself here we can see that there's some kind of a rock happening so here we can add some of those little rocks like so here we can show also a bit of darker water because there is not as much foam as the part over here that's going to have a lot more foam and let's add a bit more rocks i really like this little rock here in front it's kind of quite interesting so i'm trying to kind of copy it but don't get carried away if it's the wrong shape it's still a rock so when you're drawing rocks also pay attention to those kind of silhouettes that they create Here, where the shadow area is, as we have the light coming from this side, where the shadow area is, it's going to be dark. And then the top of the rock is going to be lighter, where the light actually hits it. And then we can add some of those rocks over here. But here, I think I'm just going to leave a hint at the rocks. And over here, we also have those interesting rocks forming. Um, not all the rocks will be equally dark some will be lighter some will be darker so depending on the actual beach here there is another rock that is quite dark
and then around it we will have the white foam there's another one over here quite an interesting shape also quite dark and then we can add the tiny rocks later on with the pastels and I think I won't add this front rock here it's enough as it is so with the houses now for now I'm just gonna leave it like as it is most importantly is that I don't have them leaning over too much they are here I will be using the pencil probably there's some kind of a bush here we can add something just to make it more interesting okay and then over here we have that shoreline in the distance okay so i think for now our sketch is all ready and we can start adding color so i have chosen some colors already and um, i want to do this in the more graphical approach as Yelena Tapkina does it, I really like the way she works. And for now, what I want to do is I want to refine my lighthouse. I'm going to be using a pastel pencil, or you can use a charcoal pencil for this. And I want to just add those details to my lighthouse before I start adding the sky. So this is the top of my lighthouse. And for now, I'm just refining those lines. So I need to make sure that it stands straight. Like so. And then now we will be adding the color of the sky and refine the shape even more. So here I also want to refine those houses because I want them to stand out with the sky, also this tree, and this house over here. So I'm looking at my reference photo and I see that this house is quite dark, so it's going to be darker than our sky, but these houses are going to be, and the lighthouse itself also, except for the details here, are going to be lighter than the sky even. So for now, I'm going to choose one of my blues for the sky and I'm going to start adding the colors being careful not to go too much over the lines that I drew but at the same time I want to create the shape already so I'm moving the pastel also in different directions just to make it more interesting so it's not um, marks that are repeated over and over again and as usual I'm using the pastel on the side and the thing is that I don't want to add too much of the sky I want to still it to kind of have this um, appearance of a sketch so we will not be adding the color of the sky everywhere so so maybe we will also add um, keep the paper as the color of clouds, for example. So here we can work a bit with our fantasy. And where I have the edges of my houses, there I'm working already with the tip of the pastel, just to make sure that I have straight edges. And also, the closer I get to my buildings, the more kind of um, intensely I press on the pastel so that the areas that get farther away from the point of interest have kind of more texture and the paper shining through but the areas closer to my main kind of protagonist of this drawing are going to look more intense more kind of full of color I'm gonna take another blue and actually I'm gonna take something grayish just to tone it down a bit. So this is quite a warm gray. 
And I'm gonna throw in some of those warm grays in there just to create that kind of mm, cloudy atmosphere. And at the same time, it's gonna make our sky look more interesting. And usually the horizon towards the bottom, like the closer it gets to the bottom of the of our view here, it becomes warmer. So this warmer gray is going to give us that sensation of actual horizon and give us the sensation of depth in our drawing. And this kind of reminds us also, maybe there's kind of a foggy uh, mood happening in this drawing. So here I'm not looking that much at my reference, but I'm more kind of going with the mood. Like so. Maybe let's throw in another maybe little cloud here and add a bit of that blue. Just kind of hint that the sky is still continuing here, it doesn't end. But as you see, the further I move away from my lighthouse, the less the less intense the color becomes. So here I have the most color happening. And I think I need something even kind of brighter blue just to add a bit of that feeling of a summer sky. This is a warmer blue and I'm gonna tone it down with my blue that I used for the sky already. But this is gonna give that kind of interesting combination of both colors. Okay, if you don't like the texture, you can always kind of move it, uh, blend it into the paper. So this is gonna create that kind of dreamy, foggy appearance also. So not everywhere, so in some parts, for example, you can blend it in, and in some parts you can leave the texture and create kind of an appearance of clouds. This depends on you how you how you see it and how you feel if you want it to be more of a dreamy foggy or maybe a more textured look. Uh, I will also blend the part at the bottom here because the closer to the horizon the less texture the clouds usually have. So if we have some cloudy bits happening here, they will be more smudged. Okay, so for now, uh, I think my sky is done and we can move on to the next part of our drawing. Now we will work a bit on our hill and I will be using some neutral mm, toned down colors for the hill as it's quite dark, but at the same time I don't want it to stand out too much also. So I'm using these ochre, different tones of ochre, so basically it's from the same color family, but they will be in different um, values. So some parts, for example, here are a bit lighter. And I'm using the pastel on the side to actually give it the appearance of rocks happening here. So just tapping in creates that um, illusion of texture. So somewhere the rocks are lighter, somewhere they are darker. And then for the undergrowth, like these little bushes, I'm going to use these kind of warmer colors first. And then we will go over them with something greener. And now with a more neutral green, Gonna add some of that green in here and then we will create them add some shadows to them and make them darker so they are similar to what we have in the sketch and I'm going to use a darker green so I've added a bit of dark blue into my bushes and I'm going to add a bit of gray blue into the horizon here and you can actually use a sheet of paper to create that straight line, but uh, as it's quite a small, as it's quite a small um, drawing, we can do it by hand. Also, if you manage to create that 
straight line at the horizon and I'm going to gently blend this because I want to give it kind of a foggy appearance that it's far, far away in the background here okay and if it's too bright what you can do is you can take a uh, gray or some kind of a muted color and you can this is too light let's see so this is the warm gray that i used in the sky and we can pass over it just to create that appearance that it's in the distance and it also gives us a bit of texture for those kind of trees or whatever it is there in the background and we can shape it as well how we want so it's not an even line okay I'm gonna clean my hands and I want to use a bit of my browns just to give a bit of texture to that heel here just passing very gently over and that just adds a more interesting texture to the heel so it's not all even and you can also throw in some greens in there if you want just to show that maybe it's a grassy heel like so and so here i would like to add some of that texture okay and now we can move on to our c we will do the houses i think for the last because um that's kind of the focal point of interest and i want to uh, work on it with pencils more. So now I'm going to clean my hands and I will start adding the color to my C. So for the C I'm going to use something a bit darker uh, for the parts where I see the shadow of the of the wave and for the part in the back here as well but it has to be lighter than this area so I'm going to use this a blue over here and add it, creating a texture. So I want really for my C to have different colors in it, also over here. So I'm going to use the same colors over and over so that my drawing seems as if it's not made out of different parts, but it looks all um, kind of together. So I'm using a lighter blue, kind of a cooler blue here. So mixing these two colors together. And also on the area where it's quite light, here we will be using some light greens and light yellows where the foam is. Okay. And a bit of that sky color inside the sea also won't hurt. And here where the light areas are as well. So now what I want to do is I want to blend the part in the back here. Always moving horizontally. So why am I moving horizontally? Because the water lies flat on the surface and this is why we get that appearance of horizontal lines happening this is gonna you know the direction of us blending is going to give us the impression of the seal actually lying flat not standing vertically so here i'm blending in that darker blue inside so just to Kind of show maybe there's a reflection happening. Maybe those rocks are showing through the water a bit. So it's okay if you blend over your rocks. <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay if you blend over your rocks because we still need to add those later on. But we can still clearly see where our rocks should be. If you don't have enough color, if you don't have enough pigment on the paper, 
you can add it some more of that sky color and here we actually see the sea kind of getting a bit darker in places so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this texture and leave it there also here there are some waves like tiny waves happening okay and now I'm gonna go into darker colors to create that Let's see if this is dark enough no um... Let's use a darker green to create that shadow part of our wave. And also here in places where we see the cast shadow of the foam, we will see the darker areas. And let's throw in this color into these darker places that are closer to us as well in the sea. Also pay attention that the top, as we said, of the wave as it's a cylinder, it curves away from the light, and we will see that darker edge happening. So just to make it more interesting, I'm going to add a bit more blues and maybe a bit more greens in here. So this is the dark green that I used for my trees there, just so that it doesn't look very um, boring and one color there. So now what I want to do is I want to blend this area and I'm pulling it into the wave and this is going to help me create that um, more realistic appearance to my wave. And when we will be adding the lights over the top, they will naturally look as if, uh, okay, the wave is curving and then there's the foam appearing. So here there is a bit of darker water here as well. Again, going back in with my green too. This is the great thing about drawing the sea. You don't have to choose the exact colors, so you can go with your blues and violets and everything. Um, just let your imagination kind of work there. So adding some dark, darker areas here in the sea as well. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what's wrong with my throat today. And here I want to shape that wave with a lighter color and create more contrast between the wave and the sea on the background, like so. And here we will pull this shadow, the part of the wave and the shadow, we'll pull it according to the movement of the wave, so kind of it folds into the surface of the sea. And the same goes here. So always horizontally. Okay, so you can already kind of see the shape of the wave forming there. Okay, now we can add the rocks. Once again, when I'm working on a different area of my drawing, I want to just take a little bit of this green. That's too much. I just want to clean my hands, even on a dry napkin. That's going to help me avoid the polluting the colors too much with each other. So for the rocks, I will be using some dark blues and some dark greens as well. Usually rocks, when they are washed over by the sea, they have some algae growing on them and also some lighter blues on them because of the sky reflecting in the highlights. But in the beginning, I will start working with a kind of a dark blue for the shadows. And I'm looking at my rocks, and here you have to be careful in creating that shape. It has to be quite clear, the shape. 
So we will maybe fix it also a bit with the pencils. So for now, I'm just adding shadows where we added them with charcoal. So this, these are my rocks. Like so. Maybe another one over here. Some rocks in the back here. And I lost completely the rock over here, but we can always bring it back with the pastel, like so. Getting back those rocks on the background here, maybe they got smudged in the process. And some rocks in the distance here, maybe just a hint of them. Okay, and I'm going to add this dark blue the same way to this rock that kind of stands out and I will pass over with my dark blue to give it a bit of a texture so it's easy to draw rocks when you're using the pastel on its side because that way you instantly add the texture to your rocks here I'm looking at those shadow areas just adding the shadow areas for now Like so, so a rock here. Okay, now I'm gonna go into my greens and add a bit of that green into my dark blue. As I said, there can be some algae growing there. Okay, and then I will use the very dark blue. This is a Sennelier dark blue and intensify the shadows. Not everywhere, but just adding a bit of this dark blue. And at the same time, we're creating more texture as well. Okay, now on the light part of our rocks, I want to use something warmer and I'm going to use some browns just to show that difference between the light and the dark part of our rocks. And then we will also add some highlights to our rocks as well. And here on the beach we have this kind of a rocky beach happening. Just add the texture. The same way over here. I'm just going to add a bit of that texture and not smudge it away and with a lighter so this is quite I think we need something greenish the same that we used here in the background we will add that into the light areas of our rocks So not everywhere, I'm just looking at where there are the parts of the rocks that actually catch the light. And also let's throw in some of this color into here. So we have the rocky beach happening. Okay. And I'm going to add some highlights, for example, on this rock here with a lighter neutral color and it has these lines on the rock as well that are quite interesting and 
and I'm gonna make this area behind the rock lighter just to make it stand out like so that's all that that white color then in here and just a tiny hint of those kind of highlighted areas on our rocks you can also add some blue in there as I said the reflection of the sky this is the same blues that we, I usually use for the sky as well. Because if the rocks are wet, the water that is on the rocks is going to reflect that blue color. Okay, and now we can move on back to our wave and our lighthouse. So for this, I might use pencils because it's easier to actually add those tiny details or if you're careful you can also use soft pastels with the very tip you can add those um, houses and the lighthouse on the background so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my white and actually i don't want to use it completely white i might use a light pink or a light yellow and i will start Adding, this is a light pink. I will start adding the color, trying to maintain that shape of my houses and of the lighthouse. So for now, I'm just adding the color all over, and I see that there's this part that um, has this, some brown happening there, so I'm leaving that out. Let me get the white in this house as well. There are some bits that are actually white. Next, I'm going to add another color in there. This is kind of a light green, so I'm mixing it together with my pinks. And what we can do, we can use a color shaper here to actually blend that color and make it um, make the edges clearer. So I have a color shaper here. What I'm gonna do is just pull that color out and then fix everything with a pastel pencil. Because it's really difficult to blend such tiny areas. But when you have a color shaper, it works really well. Okay, next. I'm looking, I want um, to add some browns, not particularly keen on adding more color to the set drawing. I want it to be kind of a uh, one, one color scheme without adding too many bright colors into it. And I'm looking for a brown pencil. So, actually have this brown that can work good on the area that is in the light on my lighthouse and also I can use it for the roofs of my houses where they actually catch the light Okay, and also this house, add some color to it, like so. And now back in with my black pencil, I'm kind of drawing out the shapes better so that they don't disappear. Darkening up the area here between the houses. So when you're drawing uh, any buildings in the distance, it's very important that they have a clear silhouette. The rest doesn't matter as much, but the clear silhouette is important. Okay, and here I'm going to darken it up with my black as well. Okay, and 
with the white if I can just show that there's something happening here some numbers something like that but very very tiny please don't go into detail because if you draw them bigger than dots they will immediately break all the illusion of the size of our houses so this should be enough then add a bit more of this white into the color of the lighthouse here where it catches the light and with a darker color i will show so this is a gray blue i will show the shadow part and i'm gonna take my color shaper and blend it together so here we have that part where there is this um, brown part happening and we're blending and this creates the shape it gives the shape to our lighthouse it doesn't look flat anymore so here we can actually even darken it up a bit with our dark pencil with the black one for example but at the same time because we have the gray-blue underneath here, it's not going to look flat and just um, just black. Here I'm going to add a hint of that part that there is on top of the lighthouse, some kind of a maybe like for people walking there. And now this is very important to get this little top bit very clear, just to show that this is the roof of our lighthouse. <laughs> It has to be very um, clear and I'm gonna intensify this edge as well so that our lighthouse actually stands out. We can use some of that blue, uh, sky blue that we were using. There it is. And make that line sharper. So that we clearly see our silhouette of the lighthouse here. Actually, I'm going to throw in some more browns over here, like so. Okay, and now we can move on to our wave. So for the wave, we see clearly that there is a bit of a lighter part happening here on the back, and there's like kind of a wave here closer to the rocks and I'm using a light green very very light green just to indicate it on the back here if I went in too far always smudge it it's gonna go away you can always fix it so just tapping in the pastel just to show that wave happening here on the background first then I see that there is a bit of foam forming here at the very top of our wave and I actually want to even darken it up a bit here where the wave curves over itself I'm gonna add even darker blues just to show that form shadow and the cast shadow from itself okay and now this is the most fun part we're going to be drawing the foam and for the foam i'm going to go in with light violets and with light pinks usually you can uh, add those colors definitely into your drawing when you're drawing a seascape it's going to you know liven things up a bit so i'm going to add my light violets first And this is kind of a, also has a pinkish color to it, leaving the texture of the paper. Like so. Somewhere I press harder, some places I press less hard. Okay, next I can go in with my very light pinks so usually when the foam um, falls the bottom part is going to be slightly in the shadow so it's going to look darker and I'm going to create these movements of it 
kind of moving away from me so in the direction where it's actually spraying and here to create more contrast i'm going to press harder like so and now with the white I can add those brightest areas at the very top where the light catches the most where the foam catches the light the most We can also add a bit of spray here, just don't get carried away too much with it. And I'm going to take a pencil, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it in that direction. Okay, and I want to darken up a bit more this area under the foam to create that appearance of cast shadow. Okay, and maybe a bit more darker colors over here and here. Let's create that impression of movement like so and back into my violets just to go in back here a bit. Okay, and now with the same violets and pinks, I'm going to add the foam over here so there is clearly some foam happening on the background here and over here especially by the rocks there's going to be more foam as the water kind of hits against the rocks and it's going to be brighter because there's going to be more foam forming there also here once again, remember how the foam actually moves. It's always going to lie flat on the surface of the sea. So we are drawing it flat as well. Okay, this is one color. So we're using the same colors as we did in the foam spray. And here's where you leave the texture and it actually works for you, the texture of the paper. And a bit of that lighter green that we used over here as well. And let's throw in some white closer to the rocks because that's where the foam is going to be the most intensive. Okay. Just a bit here on the background, let's show that there are maybe waves happening too. And pay attention to how the lines of the foam actually form. So um, it's not just random shapes, but it goes in these kind of um, loopy oval shapes the closer it gets to the shore. Let's put some of those tops here on the wave. And there we go. Our drawing is all done. You can also work a bit more on those rocks, maybe just to refine the shapes, and you can use pencils there. But for the sake of the sketch, I don't think that we need to do that. I think we can leave this sketch as is. And just maybe add some rocks somewhere. 
further away in the distance. But for the sake of the sketch, I think that this drawing is all ready and I really hope that you enjoyed drawing it with me. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed drawing this scene as much as I did. And I just wanted to say once again that you can check out more tutorials on Patreon and here on YouTube, but also on my pastel school as well. There will be more tutorials coming next week probably summer themed, but if you would like to see something particular, don't forget to leave a comment below, or maybe if you have some questions or just want to say hi, <laughs> I would be really grateful for that and also for sharing the video. So yeah, thank you so much and I will see you next week. Bye!